What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brandon and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit how I rigged up my front mounted hummingbird transducer on my Minn Kota V2 iPilot. Um, I've had a lot of issues and I know you guys have had the same issues, especially with any trolling motor that has that spot lock feature uh, with the cables wrapping up and eventually not having enough slack and that cord snapping. Um, Pretty frustrating when you have to replace transducer cords every few months or you know a couple trips out, whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I did a lot of research, found a lot of videos. I uh, finally found uh, a method that I thought was the most functional and most affordable um, for keeping that transducer wire safe uh, on that um, trolling motor. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I think it's, it's a very good feature um, to add if you have that front mounted graph with that front mount trolling motor. So let's jump into it. So normally the way that you would have your um, transducer mounted for your graph on your trolling motor head is uh, you'd have it mounted on your head here and Minn Kota suggests that you take it, run it up the shaft um, through this kind of cable and attach it up here, but you have to leave enough slack for it to spin, but you don't want to give too much slack that it's going to be in the way. Um, honestly, it's not a very functional method. I've tried it a few different ways and I just always have had the cord snap. So this is what I found out to be the best. So pretty much everything that you need for this method is two of these safety spring hooks. Um, one of them I got is stainless steel so it won't rust in the water. Um, the other thing you'll need is a leg screw eye as well as a bike lock cable. So let's jump into kind of what we got going on here. Um, we have the transducer mounted to the trolling motor here. On the bracket that you get to mount it to the trolling motor, we've added one of these safety clips. Um, it's a stainless steel one, so it's not gonna rust. And we've added the bike, one end of the bike lock to that. And so this bike lock already has kind of like a pre-coil to the cable. So that's kind of what you want. That's what you're after. Um, what I've done then is, is on these Minn Kota's or whatever trolling motor you have, um, you're more than likely going to have some screw holes. What I did is I took one of those screws out and I replaced it with a leg screw eye. Um, so what I did is I just twisted that in there and it's nice and tight. Uh, it's not going to come out. Um, I took another spring clip that I had just laying around and I attached it to that leg eye where I then connected the other end of the bike cable. So you have attached to your bracket for the trolling motor, one safety clip with one end of the bike cable, and then you have your leg eye screw with another safety clip um, with the other end of the bike cable. So from there, uh, you take your trolling motor transducer. Um, what I ended up doing is I drilled a hole in this top fin so it can add this zip tie so it's nice and tight. It's not gonna get in the way of anything. It's not gonna get caught. Um, and then what I ended up doing is I took that and I ran that through the eyelid of that bike cable. Um, so did that, ran it through, ran it through this end of the bike cable as well. And then I ran it through the rest of my wires that I have for my trolling motor plugged into the front of my boat. Um, and then from there, obviously you have your transducer and power cables to your graph. Um, but it's super, super simple. It's very effective and it's very cheap. You really don't need much at all to do this. Um, so essentially when you put your trolling motor into the water, it extends this bike cable down and gives that cable the slack it needs. And then when you bring it up, it just kind of has that natural coil to it and it just kind of sits up there nice. Obviously this might not be the best bike cable, but it's the only one I could find that doesn't have the pre-existing lock on the cable. Like I said, you want one that has an eyelid on each side. Um, this is the best one I could find. I think it was like 25 or $30 at Walmart. Um, you can almost find them anywhere though, uh, Sport Check. Sport Check, Canadian Tire, kind of anything like that. Um, so honestly, with this bike cable, um, these two clips and the leg, you're like in this for like $35, $40. Uh, and it's just super functional. It's going to save you a ton of money instead of having to replace your transducer cables every few months. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a little kind of look at what we got going on there. That's kind of what it looks like. It's super neat, super clean. Uh, I have this troll jacket where all my wires are secure, kind of nice and neat out of the way. 
yeah, so that's kind of like the gist of it. I'm gonna give you guys a look of what it looks like with the trolling motor down. So you guys gonna have a little bit of an idea of what that cable actually looks like when your trolling motor's in the water. So this is kind of what we have going on on the bottom. We have our transducer with our cable zip tied to the shaft at the bottom. Uh, we have our stainless steel safety clip attached to one end of our bike cable which guides our transducer cable with zip ties all the way up to our other safety clip attached to the other end of the bike cable with a leg eye screw and then ran through with all the other cables and safely and neatly put away with a troll jacket and up to the graph. This is just a super functional and easy way to keep that transducer cable safe. Uh, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you've broken any transducer cables, drop me a comment below with how many. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell so you get notified every time we upload a video like this. And of course, until next time, keep fishing.